first up, this is the first requested RC that I've done. Basically, I talked briefly about this in a vlog and was asked for more information. So if you've heard me blather on about something in person, on Twitter, or in a vlog, and you think it would make a good episode, please feel free to do the Patreon thing and request that. A lot of people who saw the recentish Blair Witch 3, which is also known as Blair Witch, because that's confusing, were a bit surprised when little time travel somehow got involved with what's usually a tale of white people going to the woods and dying. To refresh your memory, Blair Witch 3, which is basically a remake of 1 without its greatest strength, its authenticity, and throughout half the film something screwy is going on with time. It goes at different speeds for different groups, in the middle of the film the night never ends, it instantly changes from daylight to night near the end, and the whole film is a predestination paradox. But what if I told you that time travel was always in the Blair Witch films? It was just subtle enough to be missed. As in it was ambiguous for about 90%, and then slotted in definite time travel when you weren't paying attention. For instance, the house in the first film is clearly Rustin Parr's house. You can tell by the children's handprints, the weird writing, and the finale in the basement that recreates how he murdered his victims. The thing is, Parr's house was destroyed at some point not long after his arrest in the 40s. They burned Rustin Parr's house to the ground that night. Which I don't know for sure, but I assume is a reference to Ed Gein's house mysteriously burning down after his arrest seeing as Parr is one of the many horror characters inspired by Gein. In a way, just the fact that the trio from the first film found the house means reality warping and or time travel. Even without the third film, I lean towards time travel because of a bunch of mostly circumstantial evidence. Like the fact that years of searches found no evidence of the trio other than their car and the tapes. Or the fact that according to the supplemental TV documentary, the trio's tapes were found in the foundations of an old ruin by archaeologists and a completely undisturbed layer of earth and stuff. And Blair Witch 2 reveals that that ruin was Rustin Parr's house, destroyed after his arrest in the 40s. A backpack was found in, in a sterile soil, which is like the bottom of a site. It just, you know, from there to the middle of the earth is just dirt. Uh, the original house at the site had burned down. Now, the depiction of the Parr house in 2 is totally different from the other films. It's got no basement, it's smaller, it's early 19th century rather than late 19th century. But according to The Shadow of the Blair Witch, Blair Witch 2 supplemental TV documentary, Blair Witch 2 is a Hollywood dramatization of some murders that occurred in the same reality as the first Blair Witch film. So that's not a continuity error, that's a Hollywood designer doing their job. Or the fact that the trio aren't the only stories of people who went into the woods and vanished without a trace. Or the fact that after they leave their car there is no sign of anything modern. No planes above, no evidence of campers before them. Or the rocks, the mysteriously appear in their campsite when they return to it. Were they built while they were away, or has time shifted again? Usually I'd do some Occam's razor shit, but the razor got broken half a while back. Or the story of Robin Weaver from the 1880s. She went into the woods, met the witch, and wasn't seen for three days, but then reappeared thinking that only a few hours had passed. And while she was away, a search party were murdered and their bodies were found in Coffin Rock in an advanced state of decomposition. Their bodies were in a severe state of decom decomposition. I'm assuming the bodies shouldn't have been that decomposed, because why mention the decomposition unless something weird's going on with that? Like I said, most of this is circumstantial evidence, but put it together and it's pretty clear that time travel of some sort has been part of Blair Witch since the very start. We've just never been in the middle of it before. So, have I got a theory about the time travel? Well, kinda. It works very well with the first film, works less well with the others. The witch herself is apparently only meant to be active every 40 or 50 years. So what if she brings the victims from other times to the time period that she's existing in? A weird Escher-like mix of null space and time that she controls. The mix of the past and present, where the rules of time and space only exist to do her bidding. Her bidding of trolling, controlling, and killing the idiots who stray into her land. This is what the tapes were found in an undisturbed layer of earth. They were placed there before the house was built centuries ago. And why the tapes are still usable. Clearly, she put them in some kind of magical freaky stasis. And why there's no evidence of previous campers or hikers in the first film. They're wandering around the same place at some point in its own history. Now that's done, I can begin the real work of trying to understand how the fuck the witch got access to YouTube. I'm kidding, she'd hardly be the most evil thing with a YouTube account. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>